Okay, so peace be with you, brothers and sisters. Uh, good morning. So for this talk, we'll be covering, is it impossible to be missionaries? It's not impossible, but it's, I'm possible missionary. So I'm Brother Tyrone, and this is my wife, Gurley. So we'll be sharing with you our lives as a family, as a couple, uh, with our uh, kids as well, uh, in terms of being missionary in our own small way. So to start, uh, if you can just uh, bring out your phone, go to this menti.com. If you can just, anyone, um, everyone can go to your phone, www.menti.com. Then my wife will just, okay. So the question is, what is a missionary? So if you hear, hear the word missionary, what does come into your mind? Okay, we'll just give a few minutes. So the, the words that you will be putting in there will come out in the screen. So www.menti.com, code is 64484154. Okay, let's wait for some of the replies. You can write one word. So charity, service, helping others, disciples of Christ, wonderful. So two has replied. Maybe we can wait for some others to reply. Discipleship, costly, financially as well as time, right? It's, uh, it entails some sacrifices as well. Let's see. Evangelization, that's correct. Discipleship, uh, it, it was mentioned uh, two times. Maybe let's see. Uh, if there's a fifth one, then we can uh, proceed. Okay, so I think let me just uh, proceed for the interest of time as well. But later, it's a live um, document. We will be sharing it as well after the talk uh, for documentation. Han, if you can flash it back. Thank you. So this is our family. So I'm uh, Tyrone, uh, as I did mention a while ago, with my wife, Gurley, for 15 years now. And we are gifted with four angels uh, Isabel, uh, who is 15 years old, Lucas, 10 years old, Isolde, 6 years old, and Matthias, who, who, are, uh, who is 4 years old, and they are all here later uh, here, and they will be also sharing and part of this talk uh, for this morning. We believe that family is a gift, uh, as per the t-shirt that we are wearing. So let me share with you three disturbing data that we have seen uh, as we are preparing for this talk. So the first one is... So it's quite um, lots of graph, but let me just go through with you. So this is uh, Ryan Borg, uh, who is a doc doctor of philosophy, conducted a survey on how many people fully believe in God. So how many people believe in God? So if you focus on Gen X, which is the orange color there. So in 1988, around si uh, almost six out of 10 people believe in God in 1988. So, uh, Oops, I cannot see. Uh, 1988 is six people. In 2018, it increased to 6.5 people. So it means that for Gen X who are born from 1965 to 1976, currently 45 to 56 years old, those who believe in God increased, which is a good sign. But for Gen Y, uh, who are called the millennials here uh, in this slide, those who were born in 1977 to 1995, 1995, who are co called uh, millennials, they are currently our workforce. They are 26 to 44 years old, newly married as well as young parents. So in 1998, if you can see here, there's 5.5 believe in God out of 10. But in 2018, it decreased to only 4.5. So one person decreased. So it's decreasing right now, just in the span of 10 years. For Gen Z, uh, which is the purple line, uh, this case here. So if we can see, Gen Z are those born from 1996 to 2009. So these are those who are currently 12 to 25 years old. They are the teenagers and young adults. So in 2013, so if we can see here, 2013, there's a uh, around five people out of 10 um, believes in God. But it only five years in 2018, we can only see that only 3.5 out of 10 
teenagers are believing in God. So the sharp decrease. So for Alpha Gen, which is not yet in the chart, those who were born in 2010 to 2025, what will it be? So it's a bit scary figure, um, I could say. So the next uh, data that we had is, this is from the Pillar, which is a media Catholic project. So this conducted a survey on reasons why Catholics stopped going to church. And there are a lot of reasons there, but let me just mention to you the top three reasons. First, I moved away from the church I, I had been attending, so maybe uh, moved to a different uh, location or residence. Number two, I did not feel that attending church mattered, especially now in pandemic. We just do online. I don't want to go back to the church. Number three, I moved away from my family, having a new family in that case. The third and last um, survey is Sleepseeker, who is a UK bed manufacturer, conducted a study on which is the most fatigued country in the world or the most stressed country in the world. And interestingly, this is globally. Singapore is the number one. So this is uh, in terms of the number of hours work and average screen time per day. So this is a bit disturbing. So the question that I have is with all this and many more challenges, is it really I'm possible to be a missionary? I'm possible to be a missionary. So let us share our story when we started as a couple. So our first, um, all things happen for a reason. Any guess on this? So you can see there like the pyramid and the 1.2 M here. So Gurley and I were both uh, 23 years old then and we were only one year old married. So we are both accountants. We are certified public accountants uh, in the Philippines by profession, but due to greed, uh, and decide to earn fast then, we joined an illegal pyramiding scam. So we encouraged a close friend to invest. The company suddenly closed, got bankrupt. So all the money got flushed in the drain. So we were left with 1.2 million pesos, which is equivalent to 40,000 uh, Singapore dollars debt, and that was in 2003, at a very young age. So that's the reason why we decided to move to Singapore, not to run away from the debtor, but to earn more and pay the debt. Second reason. So all things happen for a reason. When we moved to Singapore in 2007, we brought my mother and father uh, with us to take care of our only child who was one year old then. So my wife, Gurley, who had a strong personality then, she clashed with my mother, uh, taking care and growing our only child then. It went to the point that my mother cries in the room. The good thing is my father is cool, so just, oh, that's okay. So I don't know what to do then because we don't attend church regularly, not, in, not even in St. Anthony, and we are called outstanding Catholics. So why outstanding? We are Catholics standing outside of the church. So we go there as long as we uh, hear the gospel, after the, uh, hear the homily, after the communion, we go home. So that's how, that was our life then. So we don't have a ministry. We only know around uh, less than 10 people in Singapore then. We have no community. So that's the reason why I searched for Couples for Christ. Uh, this was a photo taken uh, in when we graduated the Christian Life Program in Church of St. Anthony in 2008. So that was me and Gurley in green uh, in the middle. So with our first uh, child then. Then what happened is, what I've done is, I also encouraged my parents to attend the same program, Christian Life Program, which is a 12-week program, three hours per week. And uh, that was my father in yellow and my mother in white um, on, the, on the left side there. So looking back, the relationship of my wife and my mother is very good right now. They're very uh, jealous. Not, it did not happen overnight, but now a very good relationship. So indeed, if we look back, all things for a reason, uh, happens for a reason. So now we will be sharing with you the three foundations of a life of a missionary. We'll start with community, then we go to a family, and to our own individual uh, selves. So let's start with community. So there's an African proverb uh, which says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So this signifies the importance of community. So in the Gospel of um, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, we are sent by God and that this is non-negotiable. And Jesus said, 
And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So this mission is non-negotiable, which is called the, the Great Commission. Another one is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 to 3. The reality of our missionary ground is overwhelming. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. And he told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. The next one is in terms of what, what is being asked uh, with, uh, from all of us. So we are asked not to have unity in uniformity, but unity in diversity. One person may lack uh, in a certain area, but together the church as the body of Christ is stronger. In the gospel, there are two passages wherein it was mentioned. We are one body, but we are many parts. And another one is uh, we are just in one vine, but we, with many branches. So the life in the community is about accompaniment, fellowship, modeling, uh, prayer warriors, someone praying for you, or what we call intercessors as well, and regular and timely pastoral guidance and uh, formation. This is where we will come next to the foundation of I'm Impossible Missionary. Build and protect your domestic church, your family, and marriage. So all of us belong to a family. We could be a son or daughter, husband or wife, parents, grandparents, grandchildren, and uncles and aunties. In the beginning, God intended family to be beautiful. In the story of creation, he provided first before putting up a family in the person of our forefathers, Adam and Eve. He intended them to be stewards. And the first um, commandment is, what's the first commandment? It's go and multiply. It was perfect, but we all know the story. It did not happen according to how beautiful God planned it to be. Sin entered the picture. It was Satan's first attempt of destroying the, the family. And we would like to share with you this, one of the, uh, one of the secrets of Our Lady of Fatima. One of the seer, Sister Lucia, have shared with us that the final battle between Lord, the Lord and evil and Satan will be about marriage and the family. And it's very common for all of us right now to see what is happening in our contemporary world. And S Sister Lucia said that do not be afraid because anyone who works for the sanctity of marriage and the family will always be fought and oppose in every way because this is the decisive issue that we will face or we are currently facing. But the good news is Our Lady, our Mother Mary, has already crushed the head of Satan. So our family is the very first life and position for our children to be taught about how beautiful the Catholic faith is and how we are loved by God. And that's the reason why the approach is Satan is to destroy the very core of how missionaries and how disciples of Christ are made. And St. Francis mentioned that all the vocation, all the cradle of vocation in our Catholic faith and in our community will belong and will start in the family. So what we are seeing right now, divorce is pretty common. Apart from Philippines and the Vatican, divorce is legal. I mean, including here in Singapore, same-sex union, in different parts of the globe are now being recognized, whereby they, they call themselves marriage. And we will explain later how come these decisions of our current world right now on divorce and same-sex union, euthanasia, and all of those contemporary issues are trying to cripple the, the foundation of our Catholic community. 
The family is imperfect yet very beautiful uh, gift from God. So Pope Francis, in his encyclical Amoris Laetitia, which means the joy of love, published in 2016, it, he did mention, I thank God that many families which are far from considering themselves perfect live in love, fulfill their calling, and keep moving forward. Even if they fail many times, fall many times along the way. The Synod's reflections show us that there is no stereotype of the ideal family. Definitely, we have the holy family to copy and mimic, but rather a challenging mosaic made up of many different realities with all their joys, hopes, and problems. So God has greater plans uh, for the family. Let us uh, share with you three plans of God for the family. So the first one is, He has intended the family for the transmission of life. In God's plan, the Christian family is a community of life and love. Each family is the home of God, and its members belong to God. Parents must regard children as children of God and respect them as human persons. So the second purpose of God in the family, why it's very important, is that the family is a place for teaching children and training leaders. This is where wisdom, love, and training is, is being done by, by the Lord through the parents who have been appointed or anointed to go and pastor the children. Now, this, this teaching is not formal. You know, I, we don't tell the kids, okay, be kind, be grateful, and this is how you do it, strategy one, two, three. But rather, the, the children which we have observed, and we have four, so we are somehow trained four times of that, is that they don't pick up the words that we say, but they see us, and that's what they harness in learning on how to leave the Catholic faith. One time, I saw my daughter, Isolde, telling my youngest, Matthias, to say, hey, stop it, don't do that. I mean, I didn't, I didn't tell her, of course, that that's how she will correct her brother, but I reflected on it and I said, oh yeah, that's how am I whenever I scold the four of them. Of course, you know, with their hands on their hips, with their fierce eyes, of course they will copy that. So that is how we hone and try to temper our, our training ground. And as, as a parent, since we are from Couples for Christ, the very best offering of teaching to our children is our marriage. Why? Two individual people, like what Tyron shared to you a while ago on how fierce I was with my, with my in-laws. But we are two different individuals opposed from each other but through this sacrifice and daily renewal of our marriage, of our love with each other, we are now leaving for 15 years. And that for them is teaching them that you could actually invest in a relationship. You could actually make yourself vulnerable. That vulnerability is fine. That you could actually try to accept and be charitable to someone even if you are so diverse from each other. Archbishop William Goh kept on saying that our church will thrive not because we are of the same, we are uniform, but we will thrive because we grow and bloom with each other, you know, within the presence of each other. And I'll tell you a story with, with our family. This is just very recent because my father passed away last week, November 22, 2021. And my parents are not perfect. And I'll tell you why in a little while. Because of, of this, this challenges, this family challenges that we have faced. However, because of their imperfection and our cooperation, we are four siblings, legally. First family is four siblings. We were, my mother taught us on how to be faithful in the Catholic faith. Similar to the story of the, uh, in Maccabees, Second Maccabees, of a mother where he, she witnessed the, the, uh, the death of her seven sons and still remain in the Catholic faith. My mother also taught me that regardless of what's happening in your life, just cling on to Mother Mary and she will make a way and bring all your, your prayers to the Lord. While my father, um, he's a womanizer, we have a... We have 
10 siblings out of marriage. So we are 14. So we are the first family. He has second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So we know all of this seventh family. We are close to you know, some of them because we were able to reach out to them via Facebook. And you know, I mean, they, they were married for 40 years and how painful it is if you know that, oh, there were a lot of extramarital affairs and that resulted to 10 siblings out of marriage. So we are 14, 14 siblings all, all in all. But you know, what my father impressed on us since the very beginning of time is, he is like Jesus telling us that, you know what? You have to respect your body. The theology of the body is taught to us. Please don't go to premarital sex. You know, you have to sense the, the guy when they are trying to touch your arms. Next time, they will touch your private parts. Don't do that. You have to be beware of those, of those guys. When actually, he has been impressing on us, avoid people who are like me. And when we were still uh, teenagers, of course, you will just take in what your parents are saying, right? And now that I am older, I realize that all of those imperfections that my father has done in his life, he kept on um, trying in his very limited ways to impress, to find someone who is a priest provider in a family when it's time for us to find our spouses. Not perfect way of teaching us, but it is effective because it has the grace of God. But how come we have a divine grace when our family is so broken? And, and that's where my mother comes into play. She is a Catholic. She's a devout Catholic, a devout uh, devotee of Mother Mary. But my father came from a, another sect, a religious sect in the Philippines. So from day one of their marriage, my father asked him, are you going to convert to my church or you remain in your Catholic faith? Otherwise, from day one, this marriage is broken. And my mother said, no, I will stay in the Catholic church I, we will get married in the Catholic Church. And that was the start of my mother's sacrifice of her earthly happiness. So day one of marriage, they went to the Catholic faith. We are four siblings. Every time there is a new baby in the family, the battle of, no, we have to baptize them into this uh, secular church, into this other church. But my mother said, no, they will stay in the Catholic faith. And every time that happens, womanizing infidelity on my father's part started. But I am just so blessed that I gave, gave, you know, I always honor my mother, Mama Angelina, telling her that thank you, that despite the fact that you know that you will experience physical unhappiness, um, physical abuse from Papa, unhappiness, infidelity into the marriage, that you knew what to choose, and she remained into the Catholic faith. So now that I am, we have that total darkness in our times, but how come we ended up with something whole? How come I still ended up with a priest? You know, Tyrone is a living Christ in our family, simply because there's a divine grace that had happened to it. And when I knew that my mother is a devotee of Mother Mary, that was the time that I realized, oh my Lord, Despite the darkness and brokenness that Satan will try to divide our family, if we have you and we have the intercession of Mother Mary, as what the gospel uh, is, is mentioned today in Luke 1, 37, for God, for the Lord, nothing is impossible. The only caveat is you have to say your yes. And I'm so blessed that my mother said yes, despite the uncertainty of their marriage, despite the you know, the promise of all those physical and unha unhappiness and physical abuses that she might receive because of her remaining in into the faith. So she can be a future saint, you know, this Mama Angelina. Okay, thank you, Han. So the third reason is, so the first um, reason is transmission of life. Second is teaching the kids. And the third reason is the family is a, is a domestic church. So this is also one of our early learnings in Church of St. Anthony, that Father Terence then, our priest said that the church is a domestic church. It, the, the, our home is a domestic church. So parents, especially the father, should be the priest of the family, which I was not when we started. And this is really a journey that I'm still going through right now. So the family, like the church, ought to be placed where, uh, where the gospel is transmitted and from which the gospel radiates. In a family, conscious of this mission, this is where 
all members are evangelized. So we evangelize the kids, and in return, they also evangelize us. The parents not only communicate the gospel to our children, but the children also, in their childlikeness, radiates those gospel to us. Because for us uh, adults, most of the time we become childish, which is not good. So we need to look back to their example to be a childlike. So wh why God's plan for families is not happening? So the first reason is God has lost his central place in the family. So the God is not already in our family. We don't attend mass, don't get all the sacraments. Second reason is the family itself is losing its importance. Nowadays, let's say education are being given to the teachers. The faith formation is only given to the catechists. So we forget our roles and responsibilities. And lastly, which is true, the family is under attack by evil forces, as mentioned by Girly a while ago, that this is the last battle of Satan and, and, and the good is the, the, the family, the marriage and the family. So at this point, let me call our sharer, who is our uh, daughter, Isabel. Um, hello, I am Isabel Velasquez, and, and, I'm, and I am 15 years old. I am the oldest out of my four siblings and a member of Youth for Christ. I study at Assumption English School and is the vice president of the Young Monfortian Associates, a youth group based on the Monfortian Associates initiated by the Catholic teachers in my school. It was very difficult managing school and service, but over time, I learned, I learned how to balance school, life, and faith. I am continuously learning on how to strengthen my relationship with God. Before COVID-19, our family was very active in mission services. Back in November 2019, I was invited to go to Timor-Leste for a mission trip. Timor-Leste is a small country located near Indonesia. It recently gained its independence from Indonesia in 1975. It has the highest percentage of Catholics, which is more than 98% of the population. This was the first time I wasn't serving with my siblings outside of Singapore, and it helped me deepen my understanding of the faith as I was able to see Catholic life in a different setting and place. The community there was very friendly and welcoming, and during one of the talks, I had the opportunity to, to sing the Lord's Prayer in Tetum, which is the national language of Timor-Leste. Here is a video of me singing during our mission trip in 2019 in Timor-Leste. Thank you so much for your kind attention and God bless. Okay, so thank you very much, um, Is Isabel. And um, it happens as well, not coincidentally, but our dear Monsignor uh, Philip Heng is also in Timor-Leste right now for uh, for mission. So for the next part, let me call our son, Lucas, to also give a sharing. 
Hello, my name is Lucas and I'm 10 years old. I will be sharing how I became a child visionary. Before the pandemic, I traveled to countries like South Korea and Mongolia for mission trips. I also led in praying the rosary with four of my Kids for Christ friends in the Catholic 200 SG prayer marathon a few weeks ago. In South Korea in 2015, I was about four, four years old when I shared. In Mongolia at uh, 2018, at the age of seven years old, I prayed the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father in Mongolian. Did you know that Mongolia is the youngest Catholic country in the world as the Catholic faith had only started 30 years ago? That's right, only 30 years old. Now, I will show a video of me singing the Lord's Prayer in Mongolian. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh, Lucas uh, singing in Mongolian. It was, uh, I think, almost negative degrees when we went there November of 2018. Okay. So the next part will be self, which is the last um, item of a life of a missionary. Thank you, Han. And for we, a while ago, Tyrone shared with us that for us to become a possible, exceptional, not impossible missionary, is we have to find someone, a pair within a community who will be our support system. The second is that now that you have a support system, you have to go back backwards, and that is to identify how else then will you get a foundational strength, and that is through your family. But how can you support your family if you don't know what they need? So we went through the family needs, and the realities that we are under attack. So we know how to do. Now, since we have already a support system in the community, we have our family. The next is to retreat so that we can strengthen ourselves and we can give what we have as individual. And we have been praying the Catholic 200 SG and this part, Lord Jesus, our faith is in danger of becoming irrelevant because of secularism, materialism, individualism, and all of the relativism and isms in life. You know what? There are 300 plus isms when you Google it. And, and this happened in our, you know, since the beginning of time. And this excludes those ism which is related to a person, like Marxism. So excluding those ism related to a person, we still have 300. And then in the Catholic Church, we are uh, familiar with uh, docetism, Arianism, Pelagianism, and Gnosticism. But what is trying to cripple us nowadays are the f first four, individualism, secularism, materialism, and relativism. Why? Once they are in our core, 100, 200%, you will not be able to serve your family. You will not be able to serve your community. You will refuse to go out in the outside world to join the disciples and legions of Christ because these four isms which we have been impressing, our Archbishop and even Pope Francis is impressing on us to be aware of, will make us so intrinsic that every move that we have will be focusing on myself. How could I, you know, how could I improve myself? How could I gain all the wealth? Trying to be part of the secular world, so this will this will prevent us in our um, activities. Because, and these are few examples that we could have: G getting into the Singapore setting, getting into the COVID nineteen setting. I mean, you have to tell me, 
Can you be a missionary if you don't have your peace of mind? If you're struggling with work, managing your wife, managing your husband, trying to deal with your stubborn kids who don't listen to, to you, trying to leave the faith. So you're focused on bringing them in rather than, you know, being at peace with yourself. And now, like, like for us, I, I, I just lost my father to, uh, uh, last week. By right, the show must stop because I have to grieve. We are in the process of grieving. I am not into my, you know, my family are not into our top uh, form at this point in time. However, the Lord says, you must go. The show must go on. And this are the call of the missionaries that we have, which we have read in the Acts of the Apostles. So in, in, this, in this world of, of secularism and materialism that we have, how can we do that? In St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, one of his letters, as a human person, we have to reach our ultimum potentiae. This is the highest form of power. This is the furthest form of power that we could reach as an individual. How is that? It is, it's, it is in our CCC. We just have to be constantly aware of performing the virtues that we have. Prudence, justice, temperance, fortitude. I don't have to share this with you individually. Like for example, temperance. Temperance is being in right kind of relationship with the wonderful things that we have. Like for example, is chicken rice bad or good? Good, right? It's not bad, it's good. It gives us and it makes us full. But is chicken rice every single day, every single meal good or bad? Bad. Is coffee okay? Good, but if it is coffee five times a day, it's, it's, it will bring you bad. Any excess, uh, ex, you know, excess of all these beautiful things that we have will be very, you know, will be very bad to us. Prudence, determine the best action to take in every given situation. Should I watch K drama now and finish the eighth episode while it's Monday the following day? Maybe not. But one series, one to two series of K-drama, of Chinese drama, whatever drama you are watching, is fine. If that will give you leisure, because God allows for us to labor, to, to have leisure as well in life. So, so those are the things that, you know, we, we need to do into ourselves. Keep on retreating, keep on improving ourselves as an individual missionary. So we can go back to our family and go back to our community as a whole. Okay, so if you will just take some takeaways or tap outs from this uh, talk, let's just um, be this following slides. Very, so we'll be sharing with you amidst and despite all the challenges, what can we do? So we'll be giving you 10 tips that work for our family, and I hope some can work for your family too. So in three areas, pray together, eat together, love one another. So let's go about it. So pray together. So first uh, tip that we have is join a community. So Catholic family life is one of the communities that uh, you can um, group, that you can start with. And for us, we are part of Copos for Christ, which is uh, a CFL um, appellate that, that we have. So we, um, CFC is um, present in more than 160 countries. And this is the commitment that we did mention. We commit to continuously serve the Lord, even if we have four young children and both have full-time employment in multinational company. So this is one of the retreats that we had in Johor Bahru. So second tip, serve together. So this is in Church of St. Anthony. So we both serve as um, EAMHC. So this was taken during the Ash Wednesday uh, this year. And also, if given an opportunity, bring your children or anyone else to the service. So I'm an EAMHC. So when we bring the Holy Host to homebound um, Parishioner, so I bring my altar boy, personal altar boy, my son, uh, to, to do the service as well. And most of the time, they also give him makan <laughs> and some freebies, which is really a free and bonus, right? So number three, avail of sacraments. So this is the sacrament of reconciliation. So we visit, uh, this is already during the COVID. We already all, all in mask. We visit the church um, and priest for reconciliation. First Holy Communion of Lucas, it happens uh, earlier this year in St. Anthony. And also, even though very difficult to do the booking, uh, I use my phone, the laptop together, because it's uh, usually filled up very fast. 
Um, monthly, we strive to bring all our kids to the church. So this is the waiting bay of St. Anthony. And sacrament of marriage. So uh, I surprised my wife. It was our 15th um, anniversary uh, last March. Uh, so this was uh, by Father Iggy Yo, um, celebrating with us in Church of St. Anthony. So this was after. Number four tip. Reach out to clergy. So we know that the clergy's priests are very, very busy. But with proper planning, advanced planning, they're very willing to be with us uh, parishioners. So this is uh, Father R.V. Villavicencio. So before, he was assigned in Church of Nativity, but now he's back to no, uh, Divine Mercy. Divine Mercy, he's now back to the Philippines. So we invited him at home for house blessing, um, as well as just fellowship. And also, we visit him uh, every month uh, to do the Sacrament of Reconciliation in, 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 in Divine Mercy. So he's a uh, part of the SVD or um, congregation. Then another one is, this is Father Emmanuel Noel. He's an OCD, Order of the Carmelites Descalzo. So, so he was one of the four priests that were uh, ordained by His Grace Archbishop William Go last year, September. So he's one of, out of the four. So this was again our home. He brought the Holy Communion with us, family blessing. And also, uh, we visited the friary. So this is in Pongol Friary. So we went there. So this is their altar, um, blessing, uh, blessing of the exor exorcising of the salt, and also receiving the Holy Communion. So reach out to the clergy. So this is a very um, interesting and memorable experience for me. So this was in August 26, 2019. So... While I'm exercising in the morning, I sent an email um, uh, there at 7.49 a.m. to Archbishop William Go and, uh, and her personal assistant. It's my 39th birthday today. Praise God. I'm a member of CFC and serve as AMHC. I would like to check if there's a way to visit you to attend Holy Mass or get your blessings pray over anytime today. So that was 7.49. And ask and you shall receive. In less than two hours, the PA replied, his Grace is celebrating lunchtime Mass at the Cathedral today at 1.15 p.m. So what happened is we attended the Mass. Uh, the two kids uh, are not there because they were in school, the uh, two older kids. So aside from uh, personal blessing, so what happened after the Mass is Archbishop called us to his residence. This was pre-pandemic. So there was also a couple blessing. There was a family blessing. So this is also one of very good um, experiences that we had with um, His Grace. And another one, do you, do you believe that uh, His Grace Archbishop William Go is a Wi-Fi expert? You know Wi-Fi, right? Selfie if you're alone, Wi-Fi is with the group. So this was taken in St. Anthony. Uh, so maybe what proof, right? So this is the proof. Oops. So that was uh, someone took a photo of Archbishop William Go taking a Wi-Fi uh, among ourselves. So uh, there was another time, maybe two or three times that Archbishop, so just give Archbishop the, the phone, and uh, maybe because of the pandemic might not happen that, um, but just take that uh, chance as well. So number five is do a family household. So that's what we do every week. We just uh, read the, the gospel, have a simple uh, explanation and some activities as well for them to understand the gospel for that week. So eat together. So celebrate occasions, I think this is not a problem because we love to makan, right? Uh, birthdays, we celebrate, we celebrate with, with our families and more importantly as well with the godparents of the kids. And uh, question, so these are baptism so, that we had. So question, uh, who knows here your baptism date? Raise of hand. When, you know, you know oh, very good. When Father Terrence asked us during LISS, I think during that time, I was not able to answer because... I did, I did not know. So what we do is uh, we, we found all our birth certificates. So every year, we celebrate our baptism anniversary on top of our uh, birthdays. Yeah. So these are all. We were uh, baptized in six different churches um, in Singapore as well as in the Philippines. So go on one-on-one -on -one dates. So this is one of the learnings that we had in CFC. One-on-one -on -one dates uh, with our uh, child. So we just alternate. So that's me uh, eating rojak with my son, um, just going for early breakfast date, as well as uh, this is prata with uh, my, my youngest. It could be simple and not so expensive as well. And definitely don't forget, um, for those who are married, um, date as well your spouses. Very important in 
Kapos for Christ is in terms of having two on two dates. Uh, so this is uh, with our current uh, pastoral heads. And definitely, uh, brother Rain and sister Ging as well were our heads um, in the past, really guiding us and pastoring us. So we just talk everything under the moon. Life, faith, every problem that we have. And we no judgment. They provide their guidances as well. So love one another. So what we do is we, we waste time with our families. So we waste time with our families. We don't spend much. So maybe if you can see me right now, I don't really wear so much expensive things. I don't have... Uh, but what we do is we create memories to travel. So as you have mentioned, uh, as you have seen a while ago, we started 40,000 Singapore dollar in debt, almost divorcing. But with God's grace, we've been able to be in almost 35 countries as a family. So this is all through God's graces. Number nine, create family vision. Um, Isolde, very quickly, what's our family vision? Create one fun family fit to live our lives to the fullest through Christ who strengthens us. Thank you. Matthias, very short, very quickly, what's our family vision? Create for a fun family fit to, to live our lives. Our lives to the Father, to God, who us. Okay, so what we did is we have a family vision, which is faithful and fun family, fit to live our lives to the fullest through Christ, so it strengthens us from these three Bible scriptures. So all our decisions as a family goes back to this. So this is just a logo that we had. So we are faithful and fun. We dress up as uh, saints instead of zombies. Um, this in Japan, uh, fit, we strive to exercise as well. Uh, family to the fullest, through Christ who strengthens us. And lastly, be available and do and go, go on mission. So South Korea, Mongolia, Timor-Leste, social media as well, they sang the Lord's Prayer in 10 different languages recorded in uh, YouTube. So hosting as well in some... Um, Guestings. This is in the Philippines, the largest uh, Catholic radio. Then we, we were able to um, praise God as well for being able to share our stories in Catholic 200 SG two times as a family, as Isabel and Lucas on the right side. They also did the rosary in five languages, English, uh, Chinese, Italian, Latin, and Latin and uh, other one? And Filipino. Uh, so, yeah, so just uh, dressing up as saints. So let me just uh, summarize these uh, uh, 10 things. So maybe if you want to snap, so what can we do? So this is just the, the things that we can do. Join a community, serve together, available sacraments, reach out to clergy, do a family household, celebrate occasions, go on one-on-one -on -one dates, waste time with family, create family vision, be available, do or go on mission. So let's just quickly watch this 15 seconds video. From so this is uh, our daughter and son uh, being blessed and kissed by uh, Pope Francis in Vatican in 2017. So my last slide, yesterday is a history, tomorrow is a gift, it's a mystery, today is a gift. That's why it is called the present. So again, let's be, it's not impossible to be missionaries, but I'm possible to be a missionary. So in behalf of my Family, charis, as well as couples for Christ, may God be praised. Thank you. Thank you.